Hi, my name is Cy Porter, and this tutorial is more about drawing noses. So, you have your face here, and some of the basic dimensions of the face. And so, you want to draw the nose. Okay, you have the head here, and you've got kind of where the skull meets the face, the skull cap up here where the hairline is at. That's the first and the second is the brow. The third is the base of the nose and and the last is the chin and that makes up these are equal thirds and that's a good way of getting perspective. So they're not thirds from top of head to bottom but from skull cap to chin and again that will determine where the brow falls and where the base of the nose falls. I want to show a little bit the bottom of the nose. Let's zoom in here. So you have the nose coming down here. This is a zoom in of the nose. You have that main wedge shape you have the bulbous shape at the end of the nose. Now, the base of the nose, if you're if you're looking down up at it so that you can see the nostrils, there is a form that repeats in the human form, the gull wing shape. You know, the this if you see people doing, you know, just one line rendition of bird shapes, that gull wing shape that's something this is a form that you'll see repeated in the human form and the nose is one example so the base of the nose has that gull wing shape and if you look more closely at that shape you'll see that where the middle of the nose meets the upper lip it's usually flattened out to some extent so it isn't rounded it's usually a flat area that that folds around upwards to the top of the nose and the nostrils are on either side so there's a flat area what I'm saying is that the bottom of the nose is not pointed and it is not rounded there's usually like this kind of flat area like that when you look more closely at the nose. So you have that shape there and then the nostrils. <clears throat> so what happens is that you have you know the nostrils on either side of the nose and there is no cartilage in these two covers over the nostrils so they're smooth and rounded and for the most part they're sort of flattened out around the top side meaning they're not fully curved all the way around there they you know it's it's good to keep in mind that that they that a little bit on you know sort of like a roof they sort of they're sort of when they go over there's they sort of flatten here um, and before they curve around to the nostrils and most the nostrils look smaller than they are because most of the time we're we're um you know just as you look if you look at a disc from the side it'll it'll take on more of this shape than a rounded shape it may be round but we're look we're looking at it from from this angle and uh, noses are very different on some people you don't see the fold under here and on other people you do and it's just a matter of being aware of all the variations of noses um, 
because it isn't just that a nose is big or round there you know on some people the nostrils don't show as much because it's just that from the way the angle is makes it so that you'd have to be looking at them you know like looking down looking right up at their noses to see their nostrils so it's just a good thing to be aware of and a lot of the times the bulbous shape here of the nose pointing out will can start to eclipse what is under the nose it really depends on what angle you're looking at the nose if if you do start to see the nose more of the bottom of the nose you'll realize the complexity of the shape of the bottom of the nose I mean here are I'm looking right from the bottom of the nose here are the nostrils where where the nose joins the upper lip here you can have this vase like shape and here are the nostrils here to the bulbous shape here so this uh, this this cartilage area that divides the two nostrils a lot of the times has a flat shape to it and then it can curve out and the nostrils often are not just round but pear like shapes and it's very rare that we actually draw the bottom of the nose showing a lot of the time a lot of times this gets eclipsed and you just kind of you're looking at it from the front so again 3d keeping 3d in mind you want to think about what forms eclipse other forms and that'll give it the 3d effect so every time you have one part of the nose eclipsing the other it'll throw it into foreshortening and it'll make it pop and make it stand out and make it look more real so you always want to be aware of what forms are eclipsing other forms and make sure to make that very clearly defined because that's what makes drawings look convincing you can draw the forms but if you're aware of their 3d nature and make make the forms that are in front you know really make clear what forms are in front of other forms meaning this bulbous form is starting to eclipse all all the shapes and forms under the nose so it's cutting them off you know they're they're only partially visible and that's what that's what makes drawing drawings look 3d and and realistic so again if you like my tutorials um, please check out solomation.com my animation work there and I hope your drawing goes well and have a good day.